everyone, I'm Violinist Ray Chen and welcome back to another video. Now recently I've been doing a lot of react videos to different music scenes, both in live action as well as in animation. And today we're going to be doing something very different and unique. We're going to be reacting to my scenes in a very popular animation that some of you may have seen. Drum roll. It's Arcane! Twist my back. Now I know a lot of you must be excited for Arcane Season 2, and I'm totally with you. Arcane Season 1 was just so damn good! The plot, the artwork, and of course the music. And it's no surprise that it won a bunch of Emmys, and I'm pretty proud that I was a part of this. It's so cool. This started as a project that I was asked to play a role in back in 2019 by Riot. And I have to say, I was so extremely impressed, not only by how beautiful the music was, but also by how difficult and how in-depth the music team at Riot went into to creating all of the music and making sure that it lined up with all the scenes, all the characters' emotions. There's a lot of Wagnerian leitmotif. Basically, when characters come on screen, they have their theme. I have to say that video game music for me had previously been this thing that was always in the background, kind of the regular <laughs> epic sounding music, but I never thought about how beautiful it could be and how much storytelling could be put into the music. Also, the music was incredibly difficult and required so much more practice than I usually do for any sort of film scores. By the way, speaking of practice, I want to share with you this new practice app that I made called Tonic that motivates you to practice and where you can earn XP to customize your avatar and participate in fun activities and events with a global community of musicians of all levels. The best part about it is that it's completely free. So if you're ready to revolutionize your practicing and your musical journey, download Tonic today. I'll see you in the practice room. So I'm super excited to dive into a bunch of different scenes that I'm featured in for our Caden season one as well as a special live performance that I did with Sting at the Game Awards. Now it goes without saying that while I won't be diving into plot spoilers, you may see some of the events that happen in the later episodes. So if you haven't seen the show and you don't want to be spoiled, this is an obligatory warning to go watch the show! Alright, still here? Let's dive in. This is the very opening scene of the entire season, of the entire series. And I'm really good friends with Christian Link, as well as Alex, showrunner and also producers. I remember when they were telling me that this scene, this opening scene needs to be so tragic. Everything's lost because it was the first episode, they had the pilot. So I was able to watch it. It had other filler music, but then when I watched it, I was just like, Oh my gosh, this is what they expect. This is what I need to deliver. This is also based off of earlier Powder, who's singing this, this melody. So the melody that you hear this. And I also added in a little bit of, I was like, what can I do to make this more tragic sounding? So I added a bit of Ponticello. Yeah, you can hear that in there. And there you have it. That's the opening scene. I've sort of like had a loss for words. I just listening to it, watching it again. I've watched this so many times, right? Because I was just like, how can I make this better? I remember being in the recording booth, playing it, and then I said, you know what, even with the Ponticello, even with all these other techniques, it wasn't dark enough. There was something about just the sound that were... It wasn't tragic enough. So I went beyond the steps that I'd already taken. I went beyond anything. I was just like, you know what? It's time to bring out the ultimate weapon. So I brought out the viola. <laughs> Believe it or not, I can play viola and what you're hearing in this beginning scene, that's the viola. It's why it sounds so dark. And I remember Christian being like, is this gonna be good enough, this viola? And I said, the more viola it sounds, the better. That's all I said. <laughs> 
for this scene, it was perfect. It was exactly what we needed. And I'm really happy with how this told the story, especially because there's no dialogue in here. So yeah, music first. That's super dark, right? To get a little girl's voice singing and then a massacre going on. Oh, it's honestly just brilliant storytelling, yeah. Also wanted to take a moment to talk about why the violin was so prominent. I remember sitting down with the team and they were just basically telling me that, that there were two worlds. You've got Piltover, the opulent, fancy, upper-class, wealthy neighborhood, and then you've got Zon, right? There's the grungy, lower class, and there would be two different sound worlds that were represented. So for Piltover, they went with a more classical music sounding sound world. And for Zahn, it was like a grungier, a lot of electronics, those kinds of effects. In the end, it was this real contrast between it, but that certain scenes, you'd have a mixture of the two worlds. And that was done really well with the music as well. So this next scene is when Jinx makes her first appearance as an adult. So Powder turns into Jinx and you can see that from all of the experiences that she had earlier in her life, completely messes her up, but the sound of the violin follows her. So this is when that happens. So the music here was written much like a cadenza, right? It's like a traditional cadenza, there's no beat. And that was really interesting to record together. I remember being like, okay, so you just want me to, without click track, just go ahead and record? And they were like, yeah, just do it. You know, just artistry, go. We had a general sort of, okay, here's a frame of how many seconds it should be. But other than that, I was free to do whatever I wanted within that framework. And that was really cool. Not often do you get to have such free reign. Oftentimes, I think cadenzas in general are sort of a little bit like that in, in concertos, right? A moment of where the orchestra stops and you have your solo as the soloist. And you become a little unhinged as well. You're, you're free, basically, to communicate and, and share and unleash, I would say, everything from with, within yourself. All of the angst, all of the passion, everything. So this is one of the more difficult passages that I had to play. I mean, you hear that, it's not easy, you know? All right, so this next scene is one of my favorites. It has a certain familiar face that you might recognize in it. Let's take a look. <laughs> so this scene is quite unique. When they asked, hey, Ray, would you like to have your likeness be drawn into the animation? I was just like, heck yeah. I mean, it's the highest honors one could ever have, right? Immortality within the arcane universe. This is what they call the concerto. And there's a lot of political sort of back talking, back channeling happening in the scene. You can see here that they made almost like cross between an opera and solo performance. There's a lot of operatic stage moving when they change the scenes in the stage. Even the rain with the threads and the light shimmering going almost like a Victorian steampunk has no magic yet. And still they're using all these manual ways to show these effects in an animation. I thought that was really, really cool. And of course, we have to talk about the instrument design. It's sort of like a cross between one of those hurdy-gurdy Scandinavian instrument, but then also has this giant trumpet on it, like a bell, a brass bell connected to it. So it's pretty epic looking. Would it work in real life? I'm not sure, but it was definitely a really cool and very Piltover style instrument. One of the interesting things is that when they animated this, it was not motion capture. So the animators, what they did was look up my previous performances and when I happened to be in Paris, because there was a, you know, Fortiche is based in Paris, I dropped by their studio and gave them a performance sort of in the lobby of the building that they were in. And then they videoed that and they got to see close up live how my fingers move, how the facial expressions work. And I think they were pretty close. I think they got even some of the marks, like the moles on my face as well, to be uh, very accurate indeed for the character. Yeah! <laughs> wow. 
Heimerdinger is giving an applause. <laughs> How often do you have all the champions just applauding you? It's pretty cool. I consider that one of my highest achievements in my career. If we were to rate the likeness, it's kind of similar, I guess. But I've had people tell me that it doesn't look like me. I've had other people say, hey, is that Ray Chen? So let me know in the comments what you guys think. Do we look alike? Could this guy pass off as me? There's also what seems like frets on this instrument fingerboard. And I don't know how that would work. I think that there's probably more like ornaments. If there was actual frets, yeah, there would be space too far apart. As well as the bridge being not so curved. If the bridge was as flat in real life, then the instrument wouldn't work. I would say that the strings are also kind of interestingly placed where the A and the E are closer together and the G and the D are also closer together. And there's this gap in the middle. I, <laughs> there's also kind of a gap you can see in the teeth as well between the front tooth. So maybe that's just a uh, like musician, like instrument. The next scene I wanted to share with you guys is really special. This was one of the most beautiful, beautiful melodies that I thought was in the entire series. When Victor is a young boy. I remember hearing it for the first time and it was just so magical. Yeah, that melody right there. It's just so full of like mystique, wonder, naivety. It's the magic that's to come. Yeah, honestly, there's so many to choose from, right? There's actually, there's so many more. We gotta keep going down this list. Next one, oh my gosh, of course, yes. The Caitlyn shower scene. Mm-hmm. You know, it was really funny. I saw a meme about this particular scene. It's just a scene of Caitlyn showering. You don't have to go hard on the music. Hard cane composer. <laughs> this scene is, um, it really bops. That run was really hard. <laughs> anyway, you sort of get it. The, the, the intensity of the music and also the animation. I mean, again, shout out to the brilliant animators. I mean, this is just, it definitely made being inspired so much easier. By the time I was in the studio, the animation was pretty much almost done. They were just tweaking a few things here and there. And I just got to watch this scene and then be inspired and then I would just play. It was as simple as that. And I wish every experience could be like that because it really takes it back, I think, to the music. The origin of the meaning of music is to visualize, right? To transport you, to take you away, to, to tell a story. This was so easy to do because the story was already there and I could just feel the emotions and just go along with that, you know, from the visuals. It was like as if I was along for the ride of like Tchaikovsky, Rachmaninoff, or any of these composers and, and watching in a condensed version of what they were going through, what they were imagining, saying like, here, here's Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto, exactly how it was meant to be. That was the process. There was just so much certainty, you know, in each emotion and every meaning behind every note. Okay, I think we're up to the final scene. Now, this is episode nine, so I'm gonna just skip over it because this same track was used at the Game Awards, and this is the one where I collaborate together with Sting. Let's take a look. You ripped this is pretty magical, too. Parts. By the way, Sting is such a gentleman. And worst He's such of a stand-up guy. For me to live, I gotta kill the part of me that saw that I needed you more. So this track, all about betrayal and Basically, what could have been is the title of it. And it's a story between the two sisters, you know, Powder and, and, and Vi, or Jinx and Vi at this point, and their dream of what could have been if the world was different, if they hadn't gone through all the things that they went through. Again, really tragic, 
sort of brings it back to that emotion as the opening scene on the bridge. It's even, I would say, even worse because there's this like wistful yearning and longing. So yeah, this, this one is especially powerful. There we have it. And this is like gearing up for the massive solo. Okay, right there, I mess up. I mess up. And this has been, just need to take a moment. It has been living with me, like what could have been if I hadn't messed up? This was really tough, right? So first of all, there's all these like different, all these string crossings. I mean, I love the composer, Alex Temple. He is a wonderful composer. At this point, I can't really blame him. This is something that I feel like was more on me in terms of how used I was to in-ears. And I know it sounds kind of like a weird thing, but people often think that non-classical is somehow easier, but I feel like there's definitely more consideration. Just even the clip-on mic, right, where it's positioned, you try not to breathe into it, otherwise it gets your breath. And then, of course, the, the in-ears. I even got them especially made for this concert, but I just didn't practice with them enough. I didn't practice enough for the environment that I was I was playing for. Recently, I, I did another non-classical performance where I was a guest artist of Jay Chow, and I played on an electric violin, and I felt like the pickup for that was more sensitive because you know, it wasn't just a mic that was you know above my instrument. It was the instrument itself. First of all, I practiced. I put on my in-ears, and I practiced a, a straight 30 minutes before the concert where I wasn't doing anything else. Backstage here, man, I was hanging out with Sting, you know, I was just like hanging out with all the people, content creators, and, and yeah, I got distracted. I wasn't in the zone as much as I could have been. That was also another reminder because, you know, these things I already knew, but the latency was also a thing. By the time I was hearing it through the system and this was like a big space, it felt like slightly laggy, a hair later than what I was what I'm used to hearing it acoustically. Yeah, those two things really, really messed me up. But you know, hey, I'm only human. I have to say that it was a humbling experience, but one that I'm really glad that I made because you know, you can only move forward and you learn from your mistakes and you go on. I say that as I'm like crying internal tears. <laughs> One thing I will say though, is that I never let it show. Even though when I messed this up, I looked back, especially cause it was like streamed to millions of people. I made myself watch it 10 times. I literally played this part again, again, and again. Yeah, there was no mercy. I did emotional damage to myself for sure, but I never wanted to make the mistake ever again. Yeah, the rest is fine though. And the funny thing was that for a while, in addition to forcing myself to watch it over and over, I also practiced the part as if I was gonna like have another opportunity. Or... Right there. It still has a mental block. I know a lot of musicians struggle with that. When you make a mistake like that, it sort of grows into this weird obstacle in your mind that you really have to practice in front of people to get over. Man, I wish I had tonic back then. I wish I had practiced this on tonic in front of people. Anyway, it was still a great experience and I'm so thankful for this opportunity that I had and one that I'll cherish for the rest of my life for sure. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. And if there's any other clips that you'd like me to react to, definitely let me know in the comments below. Also, please remember to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. And hopefully, maybe you'll be seeing, who knows, more of me in Arcane season two. Maybe, Riot, I'm still waiting, call me.
In the meantime, happy practicing, and I'll see you in the practice room. Go download Tonic. Bye. I'm gonna practice this. What yes. could have been? Go practice.